I'm hoping that what is in this box is the final stage of the development of the Verimatic propeller. Everything on an aircraft must have a reason. Ignore the status quo, imagine from scratch and build what you can justify with science. Fail five times to succeed once. This is how we innovate paramotors and for you, understanding the science behind will make you a smarter pilot. This one is the first prototype, the one that uh, I've flown for the last year, including the Wingman Challenge in the United States, 2,000 miles with this propeller. The second one is uh, what I was hoping to be the final design, but I made a mistake, and these blades are two degrees off. So they, they are adjustable between 8 to 12 degrees, but what we actually need is rather 10 to 14. I've just received this box and this should be basically the same. You won't see the difference uh, because it's literally exact everything the same except it's just two degrees off. Now the two degrees are a very 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 small small angle. To explain the difference these two holes these two tiny little three millimeter very accurate holes are, are there to install these little levers at a very specific angle so the only difference between this blade and this one that these two holes are two degrees off it made a huge difference so yeah the next step is assemble it i'll definitely do a ground test Now I assembled the propeller and I have to say I'm very happy with the precision in all the process. I'm so grateful to have such a great team around me. So the guys at the CNC machining did an excellent job. The whole thing is machined so precisely. It fits so nicely together. I really, I only had it, had to add one little spacer uh, just to remove the last little bit of play. Uh, I will adjust the drawings accordingly so we don't need to use that later and everything is just it fits so great there is no play very direct connection between the two blades I love this I love this even these blades are so beautiful I think I'm gonna keep them in white I just like it I mean white is aviation color now coming back to the mechanism the last thing obviously here I need to add stoppers, stoppers that will set the low position and the upper position where to stop it. For that, I need a protractor, so let's start. Move this away. Make it zero. And put it back. So now I see at a max position is about 16 degrees lovely so this means i can test this propeller up to 16 degrees excellent i will first test it on a master plus with a reduction ratio of 0.268 because that's kind of the standard viterazzi and there are thousands of them on the market but then i definitely want to test it on the factory r which is my personal machine and i love it very much and for that i will most likely need a little bit of higher pitch so it is great that this mechanism allows me to go all the way up to 16. i don't think we will need 16 i think somewhere about 14.5 will be uh will be, will be the the pitch we will need i'll make this prediction and i'm curious to find out if i was right Finally, finally, I have to admit I didn't record the previous tests and there were a few because I was a little bit confused what was happening. So I would say now the stoppers are set correctly and the last thing is to set the spring. As it is, not, so basically the way it works that I have this little spacer and I, be, I tighten the bolt all the way in and uh, to make sure that I have the spring.
spring equally preloaded on both sides but this pacer as it is now was preloading the spring a bit too much what it means that that uh, the prop did not finish the downshifting all the way it started downshifting but it probably ended somewhere around 10 degrees and didn't go all the way to the 9.5 uh, and it didn't reach the maximum desired RPM so I need to work a little bit I need to play with the washers there's st there is st it is still adjustable the well the basic issue with this propeller is that I don't really know what is happening with it in the air uh, I only know that uh, something is different on level flight because obviously I have much lower RPM, less noise and much lower fuel consumption. I know that that something will change into a normal position of 9.5 degrees because I'm reaching the full uh, potential of the engine, the full RPM and I have the same thrust as with the regular prop. But I have no idea what's happening in between. That is, when exactly will it start to downshift? In order to know precisely what's happening, either tr testing it on the ground or even in the air, I designed this little thing. So up here, there is the battery, there are some cables, and in here are some little, little uh, let's call it switches. So basically, now as the prop is in the 13 degrees position, the springs are pushing it into the 13 degrees position. These two LEDs are, are red. So the moment I will add throttle, it will start moving, start downshifting. So the LED goes, the, the both LED will go off. And that's where I know that it started to move. But when it will finish the move, the LED, when it will reach the uh, 9.5 degree position, these LEDs will go green. Now I'll place these LEDs on the side so when they spin they will eventually create a circle and i would probably be able to see it from here okay ground test first let's go outside and see what it is doing okay so the good news is that the system works the good news is that uh, it nothing flew off which is which is great the bad news is i can see nothing so we will need to wait for the sunset. I think we have about an hour or so. So in about an hour when it's dark, I'll simply take off and then see what it does. Finally. This thing in the setup is the GoPro. I will be, that GoPro is pointing straight at the red lights. And with the flight at dusk, I will be able to see it. Another thing I installed is also the RPM sensor and I installed a little light pointing at the RPM sensor but not at the prop so I can hopefully read the RPM in the air. Uh, this is how it, how it looks. Okay, sunset almost there, let's go fly. <laughs>
funguje. So, I'm so glad it works. Uh, I mean, cool. So basically, it's very smooth. I mean, before that, I could feel it. Now I could totally see it that it, how smooth it is. So on the ground, when I tested it, it started to shift at around 5,500. I wonder if in the air this would be any different. And it ended downshifting roughly around 7,000-ish. Maybe in the air it will be a little higher, but honestly, as it is, it looks great. So by the time I reached full power, it was already on green. That means uh, downshifted uh to to the to the 9.5 degrees works very smooth very fine yeah i'm super happy with the results so far uh i'm really curious to see the footage what did i learn from this experiment actually a lot first of all for the first time we could actually see and know exactly what the prop is doing behind my back, also in the air. That is, I finally know that my prop is at 13 degree in the high pitch position when I'm flying level 5 at 4,900 RPM. It stays there until 5,500, which was the moment where we could spot the, green, uh, the red light for the last time. Then the downshifting process is very smooth and continues and spread over 2000 RPM and it will be finished at 7500, which was the moment where we could spot the green light for the very first time and then it allowed me to reach the full RPM of the engine. It ran very smoothly, nicely, beautifully. Second thing I learned from that is that there was a slight difference in the behavior on the ground and in the air. A starting downshifting occurred pretty much on the same 5,500 RPM, but the prop on the ground finished downshifting a little earlier, that is around 7,000 RPM, and in the air it was 7,500. Interesting behavior and actually a little bit expected. I made this uh, prophecy that it will be like this and I'm very pleased to find out that I finally have some understanding of the propellers because I was right. Now that implies the third thing we learned from this and that is why did I have this weird behavior in the United States when flying at high altitude? You may recall in one of our previous videos that the prop did not work properly in, during my Adventure of the Wingman Challenge, which was a 2,000 kilometers unsupported flight in the United States, which mostly happened at very high altitudes, 7,000 up to 12,000 feet. Um, at those altitudes, air density decreases and so on, so basically there's less pressure on the prop blade to downshift to override the, the pressure of the spring and the prop did not finish downshifting and stayed, we don't know where, but it did not allow to finish downshifting and the engine to reach full RPM. Now, with this device, with these LEDs, we could eventually design a setup or test a setup made for high altitudes flights. Uh, as it is right now, this prop probably would be perfect for 90% of the pilots who mostly fly at low altitudes. It would say fuel works perfect. But sure, I would like to uh, test a little bit what happens at high altitudes. So what comes next? I'm very pleased with the design as it is. There's nothing I want to change. There's nothing I need to change right now. So the last thing we need to do is test durability and reliability of the whole system. So we will build, I don't know how many, 20, 30. And uh, we will kindly ask some volunteers who would like to, to uh, test, uh, test the prototype and after some long-term testing we are ready to start production which would be really really awesome i'm so excited if you like this video please hit the like button and sh and share this video to help this youtube channel to grow or even better leave us a comment because it's very rewarding and motivating for the whole team if you really enjoy the r d process and what we are doing here you and you would like to support us directly it's very simple next time when you are purchasing paramotor gear just please eventually consider the scout <music>